Well, thanks for joining us today for another daily devotion. We've been uh, reading through the New Testament in a year. Today, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now, as we've been uh, making our way through 1 Corinthians, we've seen that Paul's been emphasizing several things. He's been emphasizing love and that the believers ought to love one another. They ought to be preferring one another. They ought to be uh, holding back and willing to forgo some of their liberties for the sake of loving their brothers and sisters. We've also seen Paul's emphasis on edification, building up the body of Christ. And so that continues on as we get to chapter 14. Now in chapter 13, we see that uh, Paul is dealing with the use of spiritual gifts. We see that in 12 and in 13. And Paul says, hey, listen, not everyone has uh, these spiritual gifts, but the one thing that you do have is love. And so make sure that everyone is practicing their gifts in a way that's in accordance with love and building up the body and making sure that you're prioritizing love because love is better than the gifts because it is going to endure that whether it be prophecy or tongues or knowledge, those things are going to cease, but love is going to endure. And so let's make sure that we love one another. So we're going to build on that as we get into chapter 14. Now in chapter 14, we see that Paul, he's not diminishing the use of gifts, but he's really wanting to make sure that people understand their proper place. And so he uh, helps them see that out of the gifts that prophecy is the superior gift. And he really contrasts prophecy with tongues. Those seem to be the two gifts that uh, the Corinthian church was, was really eager for, and they were fixated on that. Not everyone had it. <clears throat> but when Paul says, hey, uh, as you guys seek gifts, and you want to be fruitful to the Lord, you want to be used by the Lord, uh, prioritize seeking prophecy over tongues. And he gives several reasons for that. Now, as we look at the chapter, I want you to see that Paul is really emphasizing the building up of the body, that these gifts are not to be used in a way that builds up the individual. They need to be building up the body of Christ. So if, if you look down in uh, verse 1 of chapter 14, he says, pursue love, right? This is the continuation of chapter 13. Pursue love, yet desire earnestly spiritual gifts, and especially that you may prophesy. So Paul's saying, hey, uh, he's not trying to diminish the spiritual gifts. He's just helping them see it in their proper place, that you have love and then you have the spiritual gifts. And when you look at those spiritual gifts, Paul says, hey, I want you to prioritize prophecy more than all of them because that's going to be the most useful because it is the revelation of God's word and that is knowledge that you guys need. Now, the Corinthians, they uh, were in a special time in the early church, right? When we think about the early church, the early church uh, did not have some of the blessings that you and I have as believers. One of the things that they didn't have was God's word, right? Even uh, copies of the Old Testament. You have Corinth or you have these other places, Philippi, right, where they didn't have the Old Testament scriptures. Now, if uh, a church was planted in a city where there was a synagogue, within that synagogue, they would have had Old Testament scriptures, but they were starting from scratch. And so you had the teachings of the apostles, you had the teaching of Jesus, people passing on those teachings, but they didn't have the complete New Testament. And, and, and for sure, they really didn't have the complete Old Testament in most of those places. And so what were they to do? Well, God was specially giving them the teaching of the apostles and God was specially giving them prophecy, words of knowledge that would really help them because they didn't have the New Testament. So this is the case in Corinth where Paul says, hey, pursue love, but pursue and desire the spiritual gifts, but especially prophecy. And so Paul says, hey, out of all these spiritual gifts, prophecy is the most important because that is God revealing his word. And so the, the occasions and the situations within the church where they needed God's word and they didn't have it, well, God was going to help them in those special circumstances by giving prophecy. And this was something that was really important and it was unique to this early time of the Christian church. So Paul, he talks about that and he says, you know what, uh, prophecy is better than tongues. And he gives a couple different reasons. And he says that, that tongues uh, are given for evangelism. They're there for unbelievers, right? And so when you're there in the church, the church doesn't gather 
with unbelievers, right? The, the church goes out and evangelizes. And, uh, and so tongues in the church setting were not going to be as useful as the prophecy and the, the instruction in God's word. And so Paul, he, he says, earnestly desire that you would prophesy. Now, he doesn't knock tongues. He doesn't say that tongues are not useful, but he says that they have their place and they have their purpose. Now, Paul, if we get to verse 18, he says, I, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you, right? So Paul is not knocking tongues, and he's not saying that they're unimportant, but he's saying that they have their place. But he says, uh, however, in the church, I desire that five words be spoken with my mind so that I may instruct others rather than 10,000 words in, in a tongue. So he says, within the church, really the emphasis is not on tongues. It's on the word of God and God revealing his word. We need the word of God as the people of God. And that was given in the early church through these prophecies. So he, he, he tells them, hey, <laughs> you guys just need to understand the right place. So as Paul works his way through 1 Corinthians 14, what he does is he's emphasizing the edification of the body. And he's emphasizing that when tongues or prophecy or, or this type of speech that happens within the church, it needs to be regulated. It needs to be done the right way so that the church is edified. You know, as you look through 1 Corinthians 14, we see that the word edification or edify, it comes up seven times. We see it in verse 3. We see it twice in verse 4. We see it in verse 5, verse 12, verse 17, verse 26. Sometimes Paul uses it in a negative sense. You know, that if people misuse this gift, that they're really trying to build up themselves. And he says, no, you need to build up the body. So Paul regulates that. So he regulates tongues. We see that uh, tongues are to be used in order, even if it's used in the church. If you look down to verse 27, he says, if anyone speaks in a tongue, it should be by two or three or the most three, and each in turn, and one must interpret. So he regulates it. They, hey, that if, if uh, tongues are used, if God uses someone to speak in a tongue, he's also going to provide an interpreter. And so you can't have tongues without an interpreter there. And he says and they need to do it at the most two or three, and they need to do it in order because God is a God of order. Uh, but if there's no interpreter, then he must keep silent within the church. So Paul regulates the use of tongues within the church. Now, this was something that the Corinthians, they were kind of out of control. That They wanted these gifts. They're using these gifts oftentimes in ways that would edify themselves. They weren't thinking of edifying the body. They weren't thinking of one another. They were just thinking of themselves. It's kind of a, a ostentatious type of a show-off situation. And so Paul is bringing the necessary correction. So he regulates the tongues. He regulates prophecy as well, saying, hey, if someone prof uh, prophesies, they need to do it in order. They need to uh, uh, go in order, and then the others need to keep silent. We see that as well. There's one other category of speech that Paul regulates here for the edification of the body, and we see that in verse 34, where he says, The women are to keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but are to subject themselves, just as the law also says. If they desire to learn anything, let them ask their own husband at home, for it is improper for a woman to speak in church. So we look at this and say, uh, what, what does he mean by it's improper for women to speak in church and that the women are to keep silent? Does that mean, ladies, that when you come to church, you're not allowed to talk as soon as you enter the building? No, that's not what he's saying at all. He's talking about speaking in the sense of teaching, uh, exercising authority, have, having an official function and role of teaching and addressing the congregation. And here he regulates that. And he says the women are to keep silent in the church. They're not allowed to speak in the sense of they're not allowed to teach. They're not allowed to exhort. Um, now we see this when uh, Paul deals with elders within the church, and, and he talks about, you know, that it, uh, a woman is not allowed to exercise authority over a man. That, that is a role that God has uniquely called the men to be leaders in the church, just as they are the leaders in their family. 
So here, Paul, he, he says, you know, the ladies are not allowed to speak in the church, uh, but they need to learn from their own husbands. And if they have questions, they need to learn from their husbands at home. So when we look at this chapter, we see that Paul is giving correction. He's reminding them, hey, you guys need to regulate prophecy. You need to regulate the speaking of tongues and the lady speaking within the church. There's a right way and a wrong way to do these things. And you need to do it in a way that it would be done properly. And it would be in a way that would edify the church. And because Paul is emphasizing this, it shows us really that this was a problem within the Corinthian church. They were not handling things the right way. They were abusing these things. And so he has to bring correction and he has to regulate it. So as we look at this, you know, there's principles for us to understand that, you know, God is a God of order and that God wants things to be done properly. Now, uh, one of the other things that we need to understand, too, is that we have the blessing of having the completed Word of God. We have the Old Testament and the New Testament. How many Bibles do you have on the shelf at home? You might have several different translations. You may have Bible dictionaries and concordances. You may have commentaries and different helps. Like we have, we have God's Word and we could study. And this is a blessing that we have that the Corinthians didn't have. The early church didn't have. They didn't have the whole uh, Old and New Testament. And so they needed to hear special teaching and words from the Lord that he gave to the prophets. Well, Praise God that God has revealed his word, that we have it, that we could study to show ourselves approved unto God, that we can meditate on God's word, that we have everything that we need for life and godliness. You know, Jude talks about that we have the faith once and for all delivered. And so we have the benefit and the blessing of having God's word. You have it at home, you have it on the shelf, you have it on your phone, you have it on your computer. And so let's make use of uh, really growing in God's word, understanding the truth, and building up one another. Well, I uh, look forward to seeing you next time, and we'll see you then. God bless. Mm -hmm.